Um, and this is the date, transaction date. What's the date of my check? I'm going to grab our new checking account here. If I'm bringing a, a checkbook over into GP, this is where I would record any outstanding items that haven't cleared since my July 31st. So if I've got an if I've got an outstanding list of checks, even though I've reconciled. This is where I bring them into GP so that they're available to reconcile if they clear going forward. <coughs> uh, pay to, this is just a description. I mean, you could just, uh, for this instance, I'm just going to say outstanding check. If I can type. So I might have an outstanding check out there that I need to get into this new checkbook. Now, if I've been using another system, I've probably somehow updated my general ledger by doing an entry into Great Plains. So we wouldn't want to, for this beginning balance, update the general ledger again, because this is something that happened in July. So in that case, I would just do it in and out of the same cash account because I've probably already re um, recorded that cash coming out of my cash account in July. Mm -hmm. um, in another window, yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you that. I hope you want to put something in there to be able to pull up where it says pay to be able to pull up that later under that vendor or whoever it may be. How do you get a hold of that? Well, this isn't vendor specific. Well, whoever, maybe. Other name, whatever. Well, this, Some is, random well, this is a full, uh, it's not a lookup field, it's just a string field. So whatever I type in there is there. It will appear on a smart list or a report. So there's no lookup. There's no predefined. It's just a string field. Okay. Can I sort by a K2 in the far list sure. of the report? Sure. Okay. Smart list, definitely. Um, the canned reports, you'll have to look at the restrictions. I don't have them all memorized, but there's a drop down in your ranges. And if it's in there, it is, but I, d I don't think it is on the canned report. It's just there's over, I don't know how many thousands in there. I don't have them all, all the restrictions. In there, but anyway, yeah. So if I posted that, um, my screen clears out and I could just keep doing my entry. Uh, when I close the window, that's when I'm going to get on my posting journal. So I could just keep doing entry here. I don't have to close and get my journal, reopen the window, close, close. I can continue to do work here. Um, I know people that will do payroll out in an outside system, and they'll actually bring in employee checks through Integration Manager because there is um, a source to tie to bank transaction entry, and they'll bring in all the employee paychecks into the bank transaction entry window, and all the coding that they've got going on down here would be, you know, to the withholding, tax, you know, all that other entry that would go for that check. So um, you can use this to record different kinds of things like that as well. You can also use the, if you wanted, the increase or decrease for recording interest charges, bank fees, if you wanted. You can also do that in the reconciliation window, so it's kind of up to you where you wanted to do it. Both of them have the same effect. So let's just let's look at entering a receipt. And our types change here. Um, so what kind of a receipt is it? Is it a cash, check, or a credit card? Now the credit card that you set up in GP here would have to be a bank card type, so it's something coming directly into your um, account. 
And if I just choose check, you can see that it pulls my next receipt number. It's changed from pay to to receive from. So when you're looking for it in the smart list, it's going to say pay to receive from because it's the same scope. It just has a different tag here now. Uh, let's, let's just say we got something from the IRS. Right. But we'll pretend. <laughs> Um, and also, if you notice that the cash account that's associated with that checkbook automatically defaults down below, and you can't change that line, you can't delete it, um, because you want to keep that relationship in sync. But then you can you can do as many distribution lines as you want below. And I'm just going to grab an account here. I have no idea. I'll just throw it somewhere. Probably doesn't make sense. Oh, something. I don't care. We'll just throw it somewhere. So what I've done when I when I post this, and the and the other clue here is I've got GL account numbers, so it's going to affect my GL. But at this point in time, it's not going to affect my checkbook balance yet. Because it's just a receipt, just like any other cash receipt being recorded to my customers at this time. It's just that this is not tied to a customer. So there you are. Um, uh, let me go ahead and post this. Now the void transaction and the void receipt, uh, you would just hit select the, whichever one you want it to do, the checkbook and then do a lookup. And this will show you items that have not been reconciled yet. Once it's been reconciled, you can't void it. Um, and then the other thing I caution you is don't, don't void uh, transactions coming from the other modules because it's not going to write back. You'll want to correct it on the vendor or on the customer and let that send it to bankrupt. The receipts. I can look and see what cash receipts I have and void those there. If I did it here and I messed up, go ahead and void it and redo it. Any questions on the bank transaction entry window? Okay. So now that I've posted a couple of items, I'm going to get my um, posting journals. So you'll see both of them on here. I've got my outstanding check and my cash receipt. Okay, let's talk about transfers. This is really straightforward. Um, you may have a payroll account, you may have an operating account, you might just wire funds back and forth to cover your payroll. Um, you may just have other accounts that you sweep money back and forth. You can record these here. Fairly easy. You're just going to enter a transfer or void a transfer. Again, the void transfer, you cannot void anything that's already been reconciled. So let's say we're just going to do a I think we're okay. I can see. <laughs> I'm looking at my monitor. Thanks, B. So the first selection is where am I going to transfer the money from? Which checkbook to which checkbook? So I may be transferring some from my operating account. 
and I'm lazy and I don't want to type, so I just copy it and paste, you know, control C, control V. And uh, I need I've got a relatively small payroll. I need to transfer some money over to my payroll account. So what happens is all you have to do is pick the account or the checkbook and the GL account number defaults from it. So you, you if you notice when I'm clicking on that field, I can't change it because it wants to keep everything in sync and happy. Um, all I need to do is put in the amount that I'm taking from one to the other. And the transfer date matched my subscription. And that's all there is to that. Post it. Close your window and you're going to get your posting transaction, your posting journal. And that affects your uh, checkbook balance and your general ledger all at the same time. Any questions on that? Pretty easy. Uh, let's talk about the bank deposit. So I've been entering receipts all throughout my system. I did that IRS refund. I may be recording cash receipts that I'm re you know, getting from customers. And depending on what checkbook I'm booking those into from those modules, they're all going to come into this window. I'll just grab this uptown trust one here. Because they've got lots of stuff. There's you've got options to enter and edit. So this window I actually can save a deposit and then come back to it later. So I can have one deposit that I'm working on here and save it and come and bring it back up later. Um, but there's no batch. But I can save one in this window. If I uh, messed up, I can void it as long as it hasn't been reconciled. You put your date of your deposit, and this is going to update your. This is your checkbook. Uh, what date is it going to update my checkbook balance? And then I've got different types. And ignore this bottom one because you may not see that depending on which module you have loaded. That's for EFT. But you've got uh, deposit with receipt. So basically I'm going to group a bunch of receipts into a deposit to send one total over to my bank rec. I've got a deposit without receipt type. And if you notice, my receipts disappear. And I've got what's called cleared unused receipts. So the typical uses would be just your standard deposit. You're doing deposit with receipts. Nothing fancy. Uh, your deposit without receipt may be a situation where you're entering um, deposits in transit because you're sent you're um, starting a new checkbook and you need to get those deposits in your checkbook to reconcile for the next month. If you use like um, a lot